Neonic Horror Productions presents. I guess I'm doing it. Welcome to Book Watchers, where we do things and stuff. And I still suck at this. Hi, I am one of the fags running the show. Devin, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Let's go, let's pop in. And we're joined by the other gay, who's just as useless as me. Hi, Jacob, what's up? Just as useless? Like the fuck, man? I'm more useful than you are. Bitch, where? what do you mean? Where? <laughs> where? Where? What do you do? What do you do then? What do you do other than show up? Um, hmm? Hmm? I bring I bring those ratings hmm. in. Uh, oh, 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 damn, <laughs> damn. I would, yeah, yeah, I would. Da- damn, I went there. <laughs> damn, I went there. Who, so yeah, hi. Ma- um, but who makes all that shit? You to get write. those ratings, who edits that I mean, shit? I'll, who has to hey, listen you, to you hey. for hours? <laughs> okay, well, hey, look, look. I'm not saying you don't pull your weight. Okay, I'm just saying it's, the weight's it's all me. on me. You have the lead. <laughs> anyway, just, it's me. I, I'm the yeah, problem. It's me. Reason. Yes, you are the problem. <laughs> I, d- I do identify we don't want to as get problem. sued because we sang her song. Ooh, I know, but. Well, anyway. well then, put let leave this part in. Hi, I'm, I identify as the problem. My my pronouns are try me, and today we're also joined by another host with the most from one of the other podcasts. Hi, who are you? Hi, I'm Tiff. <laughs> a much What's bigger up? problem. I am not. I'm one of the least problematic ones here. Girl, we were supposed to start like an hour ago. That's not uh-huh. my fault. I was asked a question, and so I answered it. <laughs> Oh, okay. And the entire okay. conversation went downhill from there. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, move moving on. So, like I said last week, we are going to be step we are taking a quick step away from the Stephen King rabbit hole and going down another rabbit hole this time concerning D&D. But before D&D. we do that, myself carries a pro at it and i fucking suck oh do we actually have housekeeping kind of kind of i say in the description there's a link that link tree i'll take you to the other podcast if you want to listen to those please do so because i still find it funny that this podcast is the most listened of all of them like girl i'm so confusion confusion if you like this podcast, make sure you follow and rate us on whatever sites you listen to your podcast. Share with your friends. New episodes get uploaded. I don't fucking know when. <laughs> <laughs> what day is Book Watchers? On Thursday. I forgot. On Thursday. Thursday. It gets Thursdays. uploaded Thursdays. every Thursday. There's um, gay. There's gays because uh, this is uh, we are recording this in the month of in Pride gay. Month. Um. <laughs> So yeah, there's a link down in the description. Um, Somewhere there is no Twitter as of yet, but no. <laughs> there are Twitters for about three of yeah, the there's... other shows. So yeah. um, we are also on YouTube. I don't know if this episode will be on there, but yes. our other shows are going to be on there. So make sure you check them out. Uh, we have fun there. Uh, I don't know how to end this because this is the first time I've ever had to do it at this show. So. <laughs> There, there are no, there are no mints on the pillow. Only a book. And this week's, and this week's. Bring your snackies is, and your and your, and bring your snackies and your drinks. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, we've already mentioned this like months ago that book watchers is going to be taking like l- little steps away from just books that have been adapted into movies. Yeah. Um, and we're also going to be including other hosts from other uh, from the other shows too, if they have a book they want to review. That if whether or not it has a movie or not, fuck it, we're doing it. So, 
So Tiff, what book are we reviewing today? We are going to be reviewing the first book of many. Uh, not in order, by the way. I'm not going to do over 60 episodes of this at once. Um, but we Jesus. are reading The Legends of Drift's Duerden Homeland. So, yeah, I'm done, I'm done. I actually, I managed to finish reading this book yesterday, so I know everything. I read and this I, book last year. <laughs> and I know Ooh. nothing. So, uh, uh, the Legend of Adritz, um, is basically uh, a book series that is based in the Forgotten Realm, which is the D and D world usually consists of like the sword coast ice wind dale so on and so forth that's uh another episode for another time because that's a lot of lore within it but we are following a dark elf named Dritt steward and um his adventures what these books are going to be about mm -hmm, and i'm mm -hmm. super excited because <laughs> I had watched, I have looked at these books for years. Um, a little backstory. Uh, I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons since I was about 13. I am almost 30 now. Uh, I just turned 29. So I have been in the world You're of D&D for a very, very long, <laughs> a very long time. Um, uh, I got deeper into it in the past five years because of friends asking me to play. Um, and yeah. I had always seen them on the shelves, you know, but I had never been one to like go and like pick it up. I was more into like, gosh, like Hunger Games and, and, and like those like books like that. Hunger Games matched, uh, 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 Cirque de Freak, those, those, those books. Those are the ones that I spent a lot of time reading back in the day. So I and uh, speaking of Cirque du Freak, really quick, we will be reviewing that. Maybe not in the immediate future, mm. but that that is on the oh, list. Oh, good series, great series. I love the manga of them. I've never I read hated the, the manga. ending. Oh, of course, everybody hated the ending. That was not an ending anybody wanted. I was I was crying in history class. <laughs> I was like, ah! not okay. Oh yeah, I was. I, I just like I put the damn book I had put that damn book down and I just sat there like what the fuck like yeah. I was in the library too and I I, you, I just kind of went like said it out loud like what the fuck oh yeah no um I finished the book series before one of my friends did and then she finished it and she goes she comes up to me she goes why and I was like I can't tell you dude I'm sorry <laughs> and I was like oh you finished it Oh, so you heard about so and so? She's like, I hate this. And I was like, Yep. Anyway. <laughs> so, but when you de but when, but Jacob, when you do decide to go do Cirque de Freak, let me know, because <laughs> you can read the books. I'll read the twelve volume manga, but oh, I'll God. read up to the certain point of like where book one is. I don't know. I don't know if they. If each book is each novel or every two a novels is a is the it, two manga, it's the one novel. I would figure I was obviously I would figure that out, but I would read from that point. I don't I'd know, read from all that. I don't know if the manga would cover like a hundred percent of what the books I don't know. Is. I know there's I'm looking it up right now because I'm trying to figure out if they ever did. It ran for three years and they did collective of twelve decently sized volumes. I just don't know if it compiles of the same. Story okay. or that would be something I would, to, I would look into, but nonetheless, okay. So, um, I picked up the book and I immediately fell in love. I didn't, I picked up the physical book it's like three years ago, never found the time to actually read it physically. But, um, when I got really into working out, uh, whenever I was like lifting weights, that was like my time to listen to the book. So like whenever I was doing my reps and stuff, that's whenever uh, I would listen to the story. And I actually looked forward to working out more because it was a chance for me to listen to the story. Um, this book came out in September of 1990. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. It came out, uh, the original, the original um, came out in 1990. It was a paperback. 
Um, there's 314 uh, pages. And then whenever it went to hardcover in 2004, um, it went to 352. Um, I mean, right. And the, I... so... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so I was just going to say, like, I personally bought the uh, compendium, so it has, like, the first three books in the Dr Legend of Drists. Yeah, that's the uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so Homeland, Exile, and Sojourn, and... Sojourn. Sojourn. And well, then... it's actually, um, not Sojourn, but yeah. It's, yeah, so Sojourn. Sojourn or something like that. Then after that, mm -hmm. it would go to the Icewind Dale trilogy. And like I said, there's like over 60 books. I'm not going to get into it <laughs> just yet. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the Forgotten Realms, right? All yes. part of the Forgotten Realms stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, you could just read all of the books of just Dritz by themselves. But like I would say, I know I'm not that far into the series, but I would suggest reading all of the Forgotten Realms books. Um, if anything, I, I do have a link to that says like, hey, these are how you should read the books in order. And uh, we could uh, put that down in the description of this episode as well if you guys want to look into that. Um, Because it tells you like, oh yeah, like this is like the introduction of Dritz. Then this is the introduction to Caddy Bree. This is the introduction to so-and-so. And all of their stories do you know cross at some point and then you'll be able to get references in different books that you may not have gotten if you just read the dritz books you know what i mean so i will you know what here let me copy i'll put that in our discord and then we could share that later there you go okay so Homeland starts off with the birth of Dritz Stewart in. Um, there's like a whole ceremony that happens. Uh, the matron mother, Malice. Fuck that bitch. Anyway. <coughs> um, Toxic asshole. I fucking, I, I hate her. I hate her. So. So, like, just a quick note. Um, I, let's just to, like, give you guys an idea. Um, for those of you who are not, like, big on, like, D&D &D and, like, the lore behind the different races of elves, including the drow or dark elves, drow society most uh, mostly dwells in the Underdark, which is this big, which is this huge labyrinth of underground tunnels, and sometimes they, these tunnels expand into giant caverns, and many of the different races of the Underdark will build entire cities in these caverns like and like the dua guard there's um goblin like dark like i don't know what the goblins are called but there's a certain brand of goblins and of there's course the dark elf. yep and um the story does take place in uh menzo berenson which is oh, yeah. the oh. hmm I was going to get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just like, get, like I just want to like preface this by saying that drow society is very, not only matriarchal, but it's also evil. Like, just point blank. Because they, most of them worship the spider goddess, Lolf. Lolf. Who is a dark, uh, who is a dark demonic goddess. She's a spider so, queen. The sp yep. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so. No, the, you're good. The book starts of the night that Dritz is being born um, from Matron Mother Malice. And uh, Zach Nefane is his father. But you don't learn about that till later. Um, while this is happening, the house of Duarden, um is also in the process of taking out House Devere. Um, a little bit uh background knowledge about men's own barons on there are different ruling houses i think there's like eight top houses and if you eradicate one of the houses and there's no evidence that this family has attacked the house then you kind of get off scot-free so as long as everybody's dead within the family and there's no one who could say like whoa they are they attacked me then they're all like well oh well 
didn't happen. Yeah, they turned their back yeah. to it. They're like, anyway, the new seventh house is now House Durden, basically. So, I think uh, Durden actually rose to the ninth house. Yeah, they were. They were well. Matron Malice was trying to get higher up in uh, the line of power. That that's gonna be her goal. That's like the common goal that she has throughout the series. Um. Uh, Dritz is the third male born of Matri of Matron Malice, and by Drow laws, he should have been sacrificed to Lolf. But, however, the second son, Dinan, uh, killed his his older brother, um, which makes technically makes Dritz the second son. Which basically freaking saved his life. And whenever he was born, he was uh, they found out that he had like very unique looking eyes. This uh, pair, like they were lavender and bright and extremely rare. So they took that as a very good sign, a blessing from Wolf that Dritz was born. And meanwhile, while all of this is happening, um. And the House of Duarden ha um, is attacking the House of Devere. There is a wizard named Alton, and he is attacked um, by what's uh, who's known as the Faceless One. Um, and the Faceless One works for. He was working for uh, Duarden at the time. Um, the yeah. So, so the, just a. Uh... Just yeah. to clarify, like, um, the Faceless One is actually the, uh, he's basically, like, the headmaster of the, uh, the Menzo Berezin, of the, yeah, he's the, there's an academy in Menzo Berezin where all drow, uh, all drow go to, and, um, it has, like, three different houses, one for fighters, one for clerics, and one for wizards, or the house sorcerer, and that, and the Faceless One is, like, the headmaster of, uh, of the house sorcerer. So it's ran by, it, it was ran by House Hanet. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for sure House Hanet's one of them. Um, and then there was, gosh, I'm trying to remember who the other one is. So, like, the it, house is. It gets explained later whenever he's actually in the school, though. So. Right. But, like, he gets attacked by. He's part of the Hanet family. Uh, Alton Devere gets attacked by Gelruth Hanet, who is also known as the Faceless One. And he is the headmaster sorcerer um, in the school of mages, mages in Minzo Baron. Um, but Alton is saved by another Hanet. Ma Mace, I can't pronounce his name. Massage. Massage. I don't. Mm, we'll go with that. M -A -S -S Massage Hanet. <coughs> yeah, Massage Hanet, um, who is the younger brother of Garus and um the and an apprentice sorcerer, um, and he kills his brother with a crossbow, and he turned the weapon onto Alton, and mm -hmm. Alton is basically a houseless mage, and he basically made a bargain saying like hey like i'll take the face of the faceless one's identity and become a mentor for you like teach you how to become um a better mage and everything and and we can you know just pretend like nothing ever happened um and so massage uh, massage um accepts it and he goes okay we can do that um, but to make sure that this illusion is complete, he, like, grabs some acid and, like, burns Alton's face. Um, and becomes a new faceless one. And he begins to plan his revenge against, ha um, House Durden. Because he's literally the last one survived, like, that survived. Yeah, so House Duarte uh, managed to completely wipe out House Severe. Um, thing is, though, Alton didn't know which house 
was responsible for the destruction of his own. So he spends like the next thirty years, like what was it, like 20, twenty years or so? Twenty. Yeah, years. the next. He starts school whenever he's twenty years old. Yeah. So yeah, so he spends the next twenty plus years trying to figure out which house was responsible for the destruction of his own, and. Um, yeah, so another uh, thing I want to point out is that, like, since most drow, like, most of drow society worships the spider, the spider queen, Lolf, she's very, she's very contentious, and she loves to play around with her subjects, so sometimes if you do, if her subjects do something to piss her off or to go out of favor, like, you know, something she doesn't like, they will fall from, fa uh, from her favor, and that's what leaves them open for attack so the reason why there was, yeah there was something that at house devere did that was not in the favor of lolf and that's what was basically the downfall or that's what they believe yep. anyway yeah and duarden uh took advantage of that and they attacked um so for the first few years of drit's life uh he was cared for by his sister Vierna. Um Matron Malice had no interest in like the raising this child. And Vierna is taught that he has an inferior place amongst Jarl society because he is male. Um and if he talks back to like any of the females, he gets basically beaten and like it's it's rough. For a male drow. Um, during that time, Dritz is mostly assigned like cleaning tasks or um, in the private temple of Lolf. And uh, he was determined to complete these tasks down to the point of like exhaustion. He was very, very stubborn. Um, and there was points in like the cleaning where they're like, oh, well, you have to clean like the top of the statue. He's like, well, I don't know how the fuck to get up there. And they're like, you better fucking figure it out. And uh, that's whenever he learned that Drow all share this ability to levitate. And he was able to master it at a very, very, very young age. And he was cleaning and it like, bo like boggled everybody's mind. Um, and it basically set him apart from everybody else. Um, it does flash forward to whenever he is um, 16. And that's whenever he meets Zachnafane. And Zachnafane is like the renowned weapons master. Um, but he's not... Um, he's also Dritt's real father. But he is not the current house patron. So Major Malice went and you know, did what she does best and be a bitch and <laughs> cheated on her husband. But to be fair, they don't really have feelings for even their own kind. So, um, whenever they, but Dritz doesn't know this. And Zach Nefane has basically been um, ordered to not reveal that he is Dritz's father. Um, but he has now been admitted to the second boy and is now going to be trained by Zach Nefane. Um, you know, it's very honorable and Zach Nefane is very kind hearted and like to immediate liking to Dritz. He formed a very good bond of companionship, um, which Malice got mad at Zach Nefane for. He's like, no, that's not wise you shouldn't do this and um like he just continued to train him throughout the years and they just got closer and closer and yeah, front originally of sorry uh really quick originally matron malice wanted driss to pursue um wizardry so he was going to be originally sent to the academy for like magic and stuff like that but zach nefane made it uh pleaded like pleaded his case against that idea and said that no driss should be a fighter and he proved it by having driss perform several very like um like basically he had to flip a coin yeah i was i was gonna get to that <laughs> i was i was gonna get to that 
<laughs> so like in front of the matron mother and other uh, of the Duard and noble he did prove that he was more agile um and had better hand eye coordination with the blade uh proving malice's I- original idea for him studying magic wrong and that's whenever Zach and the Fane took Dritz and um to the training hall and started to train him more. Zach and the Fane also showed him the armory and Drix was like amazed by all the different weapons that there were and and he I think he was just like able to choose like oh choose like what, what you want to use, my boy. And he chose the scimitar, the dual scimitar. And so for the next three years, Zach Nefane started training Dritz and developing his skills. Um, and taught him how to think creatively in fighting situations, training his muscles to basically, like, it's second nature. Like, he doesn't even have to think whenever it comes down to how he moves. Um, and, and Zach Nefane was very, um, he insisted that that um he has to improvise like like he has to be good at improvising because that's what makes a skilled warrior because you're never going to know the next move so you could train your body to move as much as you can and have automatic reactions but if you can't improvise in a fight then you're not going to be a skilled warrior and throughout the years he did develop the dual wielding fighting side um which was extremely common but he became extremely talented for his age like you know whenever you're in school and like the the teachers were like oh yeah they should be in gt the gifted and talented classes that's basically dritz he was the, the gifted and talented um near the ending of his training zach nefane um one of the lesser houses of Minzo Veranzon um, went to attack another house. And it was unsuccessful. And Dritz joined his family and the other nobles to witness the ruling um, with these houses. And, the, and they basically told them, like, no. Like, what you did, like, it's illegal. You can't be doing that. And you have to destroy it the house like it's you're dead (laughs) basically like oh no see you attacked another house that's not allowed and because you failed at that now we're going to destroy everything that is yours and there was an attack that was launched against the fail and dritz was extremely horrified he could not understand why this house is being annihilated and he kind of like held this against drow society forever and um malice recognized that dritz had this disgust and um she saw it as a sign of weakness and she decided to put him through a trial um to form him into a true drow warrior and she disguised a goblin. Oh, it was a little dark elf slave. And she disguised it to look like a goblin and forced them to fight to the death, which he easily did. And then, um, but only after like hearing Matron Malice's goading which like went totally against his nature and he killed his and i think like the thing the uh illusion went down after he killed them and he was basically distraught over the fact that he killed another one of his kind um over the years and then it switches back to alton so over the years since his house's destruction he continued to learn alton just continue to learn uh try to learn the name of those like uh, jacob said and he kept on like failing like no one would ever ever say like who it was and um 
he was discovered by the matron mother of Annette, um, matron uh, Cinefe. <coughs> and she was just like, oh, like, why do I care? Like, you, I should kill you right now. You're the last one of your kind. No one's going to believe you that you're the last, the last of your house. Um, and there was a conversation and she eventually accepted him into her house saying that, oh, well, I am your matron now. You are part of our house. Um, she also revealed that it, but, and she was the one who revealed to, um, Alton that it was House Stewart and that slaughtered his, and he could not wait to exact his revenge. Um, and then soon after Malice's challenge, Dritz was accepted into the Mille Managathri, which is the, the school for fighters in Menzon Berenzon, um, with highest honors from his family. And he became quick friends with, um, uh, Kelnaz, uh, Kinefin, who is from the fifth house of Menzon Berenzon. At the, <coughs> excuse me, at the entrance ceremony, of Hatchnet, who is one of the masters of the academy, um, tried to intim like they he was intimidating the young drow with stories of the surface. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. He told horror stories of <coughs> the the evil that comes from the surface and how they used to be friends like like them and the sun elves i think it was either sun elves or the wood elves i think it's the sun elves they were friends and then one day out of the blue they just turned their backs on us and attacked us and then let us down here and that's why the surface sucks and we gotta kill everybody up there that's and basically brainwashing them into thinking that what they were doing was righteous I love how like, I love how like the entire time Driss is basically like, man, what this guy's fuck? full of shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this yeah. this dude is full of shit, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so like the whole class listened to this hateful rhetoric that was like directed towards like the many enemies that are the drows. They go, even the people, even the things that are here down in the underdark, they're enemies too. We're the superior race. I'm just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> like okay, whatever um completed like after that whole thing was completed um the grand uh melee occurred um which is this annual contest in which the students battle each other for rank and um i think they go through like a maze they go through like a maze of like stalactites and stalagmites um through the underdark and like fight each other and um allied with Kalnaz, like he defeats so many of the other students. But near the end of the competition, Kalnaz, showing typical dark elf war, betrayed Dritz, leaving him eighth place in the class. Learning that Dritz is now in the academy, who is the youngest steward, and Alton decided that Drizzt was going to be the first target of his revenge. And uh, he was so eager for it that Massage basically was like, uh, no, don't do this. And there's actually plans. Mr. Cinefe, um has plans to, re to remove House of Orden. And he's going to be able to, like, like, he has a significant role. He's going to be involved in that. You just have to be patient. Um, throughout his time at the academy, uh, he had many disappointments. Um, particularly during the first year, um, he realizes like how dark drow society really is. Um, he could measure like the levels of hatred that the lectures had and the mistrust that there was in like every like uh class that he had um and it was a very different logic and the different stuff that was taught to him 
than like what Zach Nathane thought. Um, he tried to find like the truth. Um, but while he remembered that the only like the only treachery that he ever witnessed has been in the hands of like fellow Drow, and he he just could not wrap his head around the fact that like why why are we like this you know he just could not understand um the physical training though that's he was like hell yeah let's fucking do this and this is where he could free himself of like the truth or the perceived truth he was very excellent in the physical training part of it and like eventually after a year it was time for like the grand the the second grand melee where he swiftly found Kelna and like defeated him immediately <coughs> avenging the betrayal that was given to him as a first year and he went on to become the champion of his club and while and he didn't even take great pride in it he was like okay um, but he did take great satisfaction in like the growth of his writings. He won. He won the battle again in the third year, and then again, and then again in the fourth year. And so, within the next year, um, his instructor, his instructors, um, entered him into the competition with students who were three years his senior, and he still won that one. So he was like years ahead of everybody else when it comes to like, like, like his fighting level. Um, he continued to pass along even up until the end of his eighth year, and at that point in time, him and his classmates had begun to do like trolls in the tunnels and caverns um that surrounded ben Menzo Barons on. And these patrols allowed the drow to encounter, like, the different types of dangers that are held in the Underdark. And one of them just happened to be two hook cores. Um, I think it was described in there. I can't remember exactly how the battle itself went down, but he did successfully kill two hook cores, which not even his father could have easily achieved i think no that's a different fight never mind <laughs> i was like never mind i'm getting ahead of myself um after the nine years um he completed his training and then he became and then he began his six months of magical study at at sorcerer under under the teachings of massage and uh Senefe had arranged for massage to be the tutor and because this was a great way of finding out the weakness of Drift. And that way he could exploit the house. Um and uh basically figure out a way of attack. Um he found that uh, Dritz found under stu like studying under massage guidance was like probably the most pleasant of his time. He discovered uh, he was actually really proficient in the ways of magic, and he was actually able to um, learn a few lesser spells after like a couple of weeks. And massage observed Dritz and. Like he he kept his like a very close eye on him, and <coughs> saw different opportunities to try and kill him. But because of under Cinefe's instructions, like he was not to be harmed. Dritz was not allowed to be touched. Period. Um, and Massage was not dumb. Like he was not going to disobey his mother. But Alton obviously didn't exhibit that well of a self control. And whenever he was actually, whenever he met Dritz for the first time, um, you know, Dritz thought, you know, he was talking to, um, he was talking to, God, what the heck was the freaking wizard's name again? Massage. No, 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 not Massage. The one that he's pretending to be. The faceless one. 
the faceless one, yeah. Yeah. So like he pretended to be the faceless one, and Dritz honestly thought that he was talking to the faceless one. He's like, "Oh yeah, it's an honor to meet you and everything like that." And Alton's just like, "Oh yeah, let's test out your skills," and just started throwing spells at him left and right, trying to kill him. <coughs> and um, he like he basically outed himself. It's like, "I will kill you" or some shit like that. But he was stopped by by Guinevar, um, who is uh, the magical panther under Massage's control. And um, Massage basically convinced Dritz, like, oh, yeah, it, like, he was just, it was a lesson. But he was just trying to teach you. Dritz is like, oh, okay, kind of a weird way of doing it, but I'll accept that this explanation. He still questioned it. He's like, it's kind of fucking weird, but okay. Kind of attitude about it. Um, if the last six months of his teaching was at Iraq, uh, Tinelith, which, um, is the school for priestess of Wolf in Minzo Bear. Um, and to compare it, if he thought that like the most enjoyable time at the academy was at Sorcerer, Iraq t- uh Iraq Tinelith was the complete opposite. Um uh his studies there were filled with endless series of eulogies to Lolf and the awards that she bestowed upon loyal worshippers and like Dritz was like we're slaves <laughs> like this was like we're not worshippers we're slaves to her like that's basically what his thought process and he hated these teachings until like graduation finally arrived and during the ceremony like they in hailed mind-fogging drug and subjected themselves to like the pleasures of the female student sensual pleasures and dritz was like oh i have to get out of here like he did not like the effect that this fog was doing to him and whenever he saw what was happening between like all his other classmates he like ran out of the the room where the ceremony was supposed to be happening and um whenever he went outside uh i think he ran into he ran into vierna mm-hmm. he ran into his sister and she was so excited because he has finally been graduated and like but she questioned why he was out there and he didn't really answer and she goes like oh i get it like you're like you want to enjoy this privately i understand and i think she started to disrobe and he was like no 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 way no way (laughs) he he completely rejected it and she took great offense to that which is understandable because of who they are and she was brought and she brought him to the land of the driders. Um, because Dritz had just refused a priestess. Um He also said some things to her that were actually very blasphemous. Yes, like he did. Condemning condemn, pretty much condemning the entire ceremony in Drow society. <laughs> yeah, he was like, fuck you, fuck this, basically. He was not enjoying it. And, and yeah. And so Vierna, his sister, took him to the land of Driders uh, as a punishment. And she's like, I want to see you fucking get out of this. You're going to stay down here and you're either going to get killed by the Driders or you're going to turn into one yourself. And he survived. He survived the whole thing. And he was released with a warning to follow Lolf and to obey the females of Drow society. Or he faces death. Uh, Dritz graduated with highest honors and um, 
that and he suspected that none of those present at the graduation ceremony even remembered that he had left like he had this suspicion that like oh maybe they don't know that i wasn't there for the ceremony um and after all the years away at the academy dritz finally returns to his house where out of all his family he feared seeing zach nefane the most he had this thought that zach nefane would be his salvation against the dark realities around him that is the growl um but he had learned that well, someone told him that the weapons master took pleasure in killing other drow. Um, he was also aware of the fact that, like, this man, like, that he he has done some horrible, horrible things. Things that, like, went against what he learned from Zach Nabane himself. And so, so Dritz, understandably, convinced, like, he was convinced that that Zach Nefane was a lie that like Zach Nefane had never shown him the real truth he thought that Zach Nefane was a true friend and that he had basically been betrayed and lied to um just like every other dark elf that he has dealt with while he was growing up and it angered him more than he ever like thought it would like he was so confused at how angry he was um and Zach Nefane actually tried to actively look for Dritz. Like, he was so excited to see Dritz again. Um, and it's the truth that Zach Nefane actually did. He hated the, the way that the drow lived. And he didn't really see a way of escaping. And so in order to survive, he had to follow, you know, the laws and the codes that he hated so much and he was so worried that the academy corrupted dritz and he basically mourned the loss of the dritz that he knew before he went into the academy he was like no my like that's not my dritz anymore like this is this is the drow that matron malice wanted and so they were both mourning a loss that didn't even fucking happen. <laughs> and me listening to this, I was like, no, stop. Like, like you're just talk to each other. Talk to them. But of course, you need to have something going on, right? Um, mm -hmm. And Matron Malice called the whole family together and she told them about the rumors that of a war going up against the, their house. And she ordered all of them to try and learn who their enemy was and prepare for an attack at any time. Um, Dritz probably only spent two days at home before joining the patrol groups that kept to the caverns around Minzo Berenzon. Um, the patrol was uh, c consisted of like Dinan, Massage, and Guinevere, or Guinevere. Um, and Dritz and Grinnabar became really close friends. Uh, they, they were ordered that, like, oh, well, Dritz is the most experienced one. He, you know, like, he goes at the front and he needs Grinnabar there with him. And to which Massage is like, no, but Grinnabar is mine. And, like, they're like, no, you're going to listen to what I fucking tell you. And Grinnabar is going to go up there. So Massage was very salty over that. And during these patrols, like, Dritz and Guinevar became very close friends, and, like, they trusted each other very much. Um, one of those missions um, that was assigned to them, they had to go up to the surface and raid a group of wood elf. And for, like, the first time ever, uh, they were all scared. And now all, all the drow were scared, except for Dritz. Of course. He saw this world and he thought it was beautiful. He saw this group of wood elves that were just 
dancing around a campfire, enjoying themselves, and was like, wow, what a merry old time. These people are really our enemies? He goes, I want to befriend them. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to fight them. But of course, the patrol group had to attack. And he hated it. He hated the violence and the non-existent mercy that they showed towards these elves that basically did not fight back like they were defenseless there was nothing that they did wrong and in order for him he he decided not to fight he did not want to kill them um he pretended to kill an elf child um that i think was standing by their their dead mother and he pretended to kill her by getting the blood from the mother's corpse and smearing it on her and basically convincing her like don't move don't talk like even though they speak completely different languages he was telling her like don't 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 move like just like you're the don't wait until we're gone <coughs> um and he b- truly believed that no one knew about the fact that he did not kill this little girl. And however, this act cost his house the favor of Lolf. And that could result in the doom of the house. And Cinefe discovered that Lolf had withdrawn her favor from this house. And she immediately made plans to take advantage of this weakness and decided to attack um, House Jordan. Um, and then, of course, upon his return to Mar- Minzo Berenzon, you know, he's haunted by the memory of this raid. Um, he runs into Zachnafane. And. Zachnafane truly believes that Dritz killed these elves and the elf child. And Zachnafane was just like, okay, well, we're going to fight. We're going to go into a sparring match. And Dritz was like, okay, cool. We can do that. Um, And they both had the idea that they were going to kill, like Dritz was going to kill Zachnafane. And Zachnafane was going to kill Dritz. Um, yeah, Dritz. Yeah, Dritz up until this point has begun he began to start to resent uh Zachnafane because mm-hmm. he always thought Zachnafane was his only true friend. But then as he learns more about him, right, like the things that he's done, like killing other drow, you know, even child drow children and all, every, pretty much everything he does and the rumors he heard about how Zachnafane enjoys killing other drow, like he he's starting to believe he believed that uh that it was all a lie, like how Zach treated him, everything was just a lie. Yeah. So I... and Huh? I said that. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yes. So yes, I did. Before they went back up. Like before they went up on to the surface, I was like, Yeah, like Zach Nefane believes that Dritz, you know, has been tainted like he's now like the drow that they want him to be and Dritz thinks that Zach Nefane has been lying to him and he feels betrayed by Zach Nefane Ooh. because like I said that and so they throughout the entire time that they haven't been able to meet these thoughts have been brewing which ends up with this fight to the death bar um Dritz does accept the challenge and he hopes um, to kill him and remove himself from like he wants as soon as he's done killing Zach Nefane he plans to leave. He does not want to be here anymore. Um, But since Dritz patrol group was ordered to investigate activity um, in the tunnels that were east of the city (coughs) <coughs> him and Zach Nefane was just like okay we'll do this in a week we'll see each other in a week and they go to the tunnels 
and Drizzt and his uh, patrol group go to the tunnels and they discover um a small group of Zerf Neblin, which are deep gnomes. And they had just strayed too far from 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 their territory and a little bit into the draw territory. And you know, typical drow were like, nope, it's time to kill them. Kill the Zerf Neblin. And uh a Dritz came in contact with an earth elemental that the gnome that one of the gnomes had summoned. And Gwynabar helped with defeating the elemental. Um, but near the end of the fight, Massage was like, oh, this is my chance. I'm going to fuck him up and try to attack. He hit them both with a lightning bolt. And it, it failed to kill Dritz. Um, but now... Like he was caught by one of the gnomes, and Dinan and the rest of the patrol group quickly tracked down Dritz, and with the help of Guinevar, proceeded to kill all the gnomes that were holding him captive. Not the gnomes. Yeah, the Zerf Neblin. And but there was one. There was one. His name is Belwar Disengulp. Remember that name. Uh, he becomes important later. Oh, my freaking computer. It locked on me. No. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. I got it. Um, yeah. He was oh, no. allowed. He was it allowed locked. To... Oh, no. My computer. It locked. <laughs> um, he, he was captured. And they were about to kill him. And Dritch was like, no, don't kill him. And they're like, what do you mean don't kill him? And like, like they're like, we have to. We have to kill him. Like, they were questioning why in their right mind would they not kill someone who went into our territory. And quick thinking, he's just like, we, we, we do something to them and, and send it as, as, a, as a warning message for them not to come into our territory anymore. And Denon's like, Ah, uh, you know what? Okay. You cut off his hands then. Oh. It's your idea. You cut off his hands and sent him on his way. And now? And before he cut off his hands, he did apologize to Belva. I think it was just loud enough for him to hear. But he cut off Belvoir's hands. <gasps> and Belwar went on his way back to Blindenstone. And uh, now, which is the city of this of this Zerf Neblin that's closest to Menzel Bay. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to Malice and her daughters. Uh, and they summon, I can't pronounce the name, but it's basically a handmaiden of Wolf. And they basically pray to this uh, handmaiden, trying to discover what house is preparing to attack them. And, and she kind of refused to give any type of direct answers and that, but did reveal that you already know the house. And left and then it was only after the priest like the duorden priestesses gathered with the rest of the family that they did that uh they demanded answer and only then did like and dritz like realized that like oh my god massage tried to kill me he, he tried, tried to blast me with a lightning bolt. Yeah, like like that was like that was on purpose. It was on the accident. It was on purpose. And he does <laughs> say like it was it was House Annette. Like Massage attacked me while we were fighting an Earth Elemental. Um. And 
they decided to summon another one of Walt's uh, handmaidens in order to learn where House Cinefe's standing is with Lul. But they discovered that one of the family members of the Duerden house has invoked the wrath of Lul. No. And so they're like, who is it? They're trying to figure it out the entire time. Meanwhile, during this whole thing with the with the with Malice and her daughters and the handmaiden, Dritz and Zacnafane begin their fight. They are they are fighting furiously. <coughs> and they admit their secrets. Zacnafane admits like how much he hates living here and that he was doing it out of survival. And Dritz um tells him that he agrees and that like he like they basically wear their heart on their sleeves spill their guts about everything and the bond between them grows stronger with this fight and they understand each other and the shared uniqueness that they have amongst the drow and Zach Nefane's revelation that like he tells Dritz, like I, I'm not allowed to tell you this, but I'm I'm your father. Um, like yes, yeah, and like Dritz was yes. like, he's like Dritz was like, fuck yes, I always fucking knew it. Like he had this no. like, he's like yeah, but unbeknownst to them, Malice and her daughters were scrying the entire fight. And now knew the reason why their house had lost a favor to Lull. And, uh... and then Malice specifically ordered the family to remain in the house itself. She ordered the entire family, like, don't fucking leave. Because she was completely scared that um, there would be an assassination by House Hanette. Um, because well, because you know they're trying to attack him, but too much had happened to Dritz for him to want to obey. He does not want to be there, so he needed time to think. You know, he's just like, okay, so we just got attacked. We found out that you know this house wants to destroy us. Um, I found out that everything I thought about who I now know as my father has been a fucking lie. And like, he actually is the great guy that I, that I knew he was. Um, and like he, you know, a lot of shit has been going on. Like he wants to go walk out and think about what has happened. So he leaves. He needs time away from the house. So He's walking through the peaceful tunnels of the un um and massage learns that Dritz left the house by himself and decided, you know what? I'm gonna go fucking try and kill him again. And Ooh. he summons Guinevere and orders her to find him and kill him. But Unknown to Massage or the Magical Panther, Dritz's thoughts distracted him to his dangerous surrounding him, uh, surroundings, allowing him to be ensnared by a cave fisher. And a cave fisher is like this big lobster-like monster. Um, they have like they shoot out basically it's like a lobster and a spider came together and had a baby in a way um and so he got caught by one <coughs> and whenever Guinevere found Dritz he was like near death and and she was so concerned for his safety that she was like fuck my orders and helped Dritz um, kill the cave fisher to and then Gritz, uh, Dritz, Dritz, 
Dritz. Dritz then helped Guinevere um, understand that she was her own master. Like he, this guy, I love him so much. <laughs> the love that I have for Dritz is so much. <laughs> um, and he was just like, no, like you're your own person. Like you do you. He he is a big fan of free will and taught her to overcome the commands that Massage had given to her. And she led Dritz to Massage, who had Alton with him, and they tried to kill Dritz. Um, there was a whole battle that happened, um, which it resulted in both of the mages' deaths. So both Alton and Massage died. And after that, like, Dritz was like, I'm never going to kill another drow. I cannot do this again. Like, these are, are my people. I cannot do this anymore. He took the magical statue, the little st baby statuette that is used to summon Guinevere, and went back home. And while he was doing all this, Malice went up to Zachnafane and was just like, um, like hell you're going to do all the shit that you and Dritz have been talking about, about leaving our house. And you have been nothing but like unloyal to this house. And like they explained that because of what Dritz did on saving this young elf's life and doing all this other stuff. Um, we're going to kill your son. Like, this is his fault. He's the reason why we don't have favor with Lolf. This is the reason why um, House Hanet is going to fucking try and attack us. And Zach Nefain was like, no, don't kill my son. I'm not going to allow you to kill my son. And that's whenever Malice goes, fine. What do you suggest then? You don't want me to kill your son. What do you suggest? And he goes, kill me instead. Let me, like, let me pay for my son's actions. Because uh, my teachings is the reason why my son's doing what he's doing. And Malice is like, okay, I'll do that. Knowing full well that the death of Zachnafane would hurt Dritz a whole lot more than what the original um the original punishment was gonna be. So she kills him. And then Dritz comes home to find that his family was preparing for war. He learns about the the sacrifice of Zachnafane. In order to gain the the uh, the favor back of Lolf, and he had so much grief in his heart, he was so heartbroken over everything that he decided to leave. He decided to leave House Jordan, decided to leave Men's Own Barons on, and start a life outside of the city. And away from the teachings of the drought. Um, and gets lost in the tunnels of the Underdark. And that's where the book ends. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. I love this book. Yeah, you know, when I, I used to see these books on the on the shelves in bookstores all the time i still do and every time i'd see them i'd be like man those books look intimidating to read even though they're not that big they just looked like like eh, they look like a hard read but now i'm reading this book and i'm like i love it like i think i think what makes people scared about it is because they know that it's related to D D, <coughs> and they think that if they don't know about D and D itself, the game itself, and like the things that, like the monsters or the, the the rules, that you won't be able to actually understand what's happening in this book. But like I went into this, just like oh, it's going to be a fantasy book, 
And they explain everything. They explain what the monsters are that they go up against, the spells and what they do. They don't even say like what the spells' names are. They don't go like like I'm gonna cast third level lightning bolt. No, they don't do that. <laughs> well, of course not. That'd be very weird. <laughs> That's like really breaking the fourth. Like you're breaking the wall there, my guy. You are very yeah. self aware at the fact that you are a D and D character. No, it's like oh this character casts a spell to and like lightning bolts shoot out of their hands you know like they explain exactly like everything that's happening in the book and you get a better understanding of if you are into D, &D like you get a better understanding of how drow culture is because people will just like read about a drow and be like oh they seem dark and edgy i want to play them um and and you know you can do that and go right ahead it's your fucking character but like this actually gives you a better understanding of what of where the dark and edginess come from <coughs> yeah <laughs> it gives you a reason why you think it's dark and edgy gives yeah you context of it yeah dude oh my god but like i love how dritz immediately starts questioning like why like why is everybody our enemy and then he goes everybody's our enemy that even other Dr that makes fucking sense if everybody else is our enemy why are we enemies of each other why aren't we helping each other building each other up yeah i was like are, you're like the most mentally healthy fucking draw i have ever read about he's the one asking the real questions i know <laughs> i was like damn like he's I asking love... he's asking the tough ones mm -hmm. and everybody else is like yeah yes you're right <laughs> like about like all the hateful teachings they're like yes preach we know we are the best ones like like they accepted it and dritz is like what the fuck what the hell's going on over here <coughs> i love it and like i loved it so much that immediately after the ending of this i was like i gotta know what happens next immediately started listening to the second book <laughs> yeah yeah, that's. I'm glad I bought the edition that I bought because it comes with the whole trilogy, Exile mm -hmm. and Sawyer. Mm -hmm. So, like, as soon as I finished reading the, fir the first one, I immediately started reading this. I, I didn't even realize I started on the second one until I was, like, in well into it. And I'm like, oh, wait, this is Exile. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, like, oof. Oof. L loved it. I, I love it. Um, you know, with the success of that D and D movie, uh, it's, uh, it's on. It's called D and D uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which has nothing to do with this book, like no. it's a completely right. different story. I know, I know. It is based in the Sword Coast, though. Starts off in Icewind Dale. Mm hmm. I wonder if, like, see there. Like with how successful that movie was, I'm pretty sure they're going to be making more. Yeah, they're going to be doing more. I know for a fact they're going to do more, and they should definitely like talk more about the Underdark. Because hold on, hold on, this hold on, is. Hold on. Huh? God, if I could freaking spell. Uh. I know they're making a um. A streaming oh. show for D and D, but that's far as i know as far as what's continuing so, on so apparently dritz was supposed to be in the D, D movie really oh he was he oh that's was right he was wasn't he to be in it and they cut him out yeah so Bastards. uh he'll probably make an appearance at some point so zinnick was originally supposed to be played like was supposed to originally be dritzed. Oh. Um, but he was pulled by quote unquote controversy that involved the character. Um uh, Oh, it, it was it was probably the whole um how they should color a uh, drow skin is probably so what the controversy says, was. Based on the timing, it's possible that Lashman was referring to the twenty twenty statement released by Wizards of the Coast regarding changes to how yeah. drow are depicted in Dungeons and Dragons yeah. media. So the yeah. directors, um, they love the role that Dritz played the script, so they created Zenic instead. And yeah. I'm like, 
it's because of the how how it's the it's the tricky matter that they don't want to get yeah, a backlash like, for like, how they depict the drow. They're, they're scared that if you just depict a drow, that they'll be yeah. going blackface because drow yes. are darker skinned characters. Mind you, whenever you look at a drow, you don't see brown skin. You don't you see, see gray skin. and blacks. You and... see gray and there are like black, like I mean like black, like black, black, like I'm talking like ink the color it's black like like, yeah. like the yeah, ink it's... or purple like there's yeah. like purple shades like darker purple shades and um a, a lot of people are worried like oh well no you're doing blackface and i'm like i i well, get shut it. the fuck up yeah i understand a, uh, but also like you're also depicting a fictional race of humanoids yeah. That live I would, underground. I would say it's more problematic to have like the um more of the tribal races. I think it would be more, more riskier than the drow than like, depicting like, the drow, like the orcs. Yes, that I would think that would be more risky to show the to depict the orcs rather than the drow. Because yeah. the drow, you can if you don't want to show like really dark skin, like bl like black as ink drow, don't make them more gray scale or purplish gray. Make go along the purple and gray scale instead of if you don't want if they don't want if you and they think it's problematic to show like the black is ink yeah. drow show like the go with like the gray scale with it because yeah. I I because I know that's probably that's probably the issues they don't want to do they don't want to get tackled by that but I'm like guys it'd be more I think it'd be more of a challenge to do the orcs and the drow what are you talking about what do you mean that or even the tiefling. Because Tiefling has like so many different shades of colors of skin. You could be yeah. anything. I mean, they already did a Tiefling though. Yeah, but the Tiefling that they did was regular skin color. Which Tieflings can be. Yeah, they can. Yeah. But yeah. Tieflings could also be green, blue, black, purple. Yeah. Yeah, white. they definitely need to like, they definitely need to get more creative with the D&D &D characters because like the characters in D&D &D are like whimsical. They could literally be anything you want. But so, like, I mean, I can understand. Like, there was also like a huge thing that happened. I it was um, there was an episode of a streaming uh D and D game where I think that they did have a drow character and they did dress up. Like, it was the theme of like they had to dress up. Wasn't uh, that the community? The community because they were there was a banned episode from the community that they wanted to do, but they never did because of that. Because the whole no, one no, of the no, characters no. No, painted their skin like the drow. No, it was an actual like like D and D game, and um. one of these people were a drow character, and they dress up as a drow, and it was like they oh maybe it was like beside the point. People decided to do like an uproar because of the fact that someone was a drow, and I was just yeah. like, okay, like. Or it was they had a fear that there would be an uprising because like they were afraid of like oh we're there there'll be blackface yeah and from a, a I wouldn't say an uneducated eye I would say from a normie's eye like non D and D players eye I could understand like like how someone could be upset over it you know but. Yeah. If it's catered to the D and D community, I, I, me personally, I wouldn't have taken. I wouldn't be upset over it. You know, be like, oh look, there are drought. Oh, that's fucking cool. You know, I have Dritz costume. I have his costume. Mind you, I didn't paint myself. I didn't paint myself. I just yeah. dressed up like I. I wore the costume. I did not, you know, portray myself as Dritz himself, but I do have his costume. Um, nice. Yeah, it's very cheaply made. Like, I was like, mm, I feel like I could make this better. I bought it at Party City. Not Party City. Uh, uh, the Halloween the, the Halloween store. Oh, uh, Spirit Halloween? Yeah. yeah they had a they, Dritz costume? They had Dritz and they had Caddy Brie. 
Like this was like two, three years ago. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, we're gonna be they have it now. Well, this year I'm gonna like start preparing for our Halloween costume ideas because we're gonna be doing. Are we gonna do the D and D theme or what? I want to. That's I why I brought up the idea. I, I would have to start building it now because if we're doing. Oh wait, are we doing like. Like what we talked about whenever we went to go watch uh, Shin the other day. What? Whenever like, oh, yeah, like if we're going to be like the actual class that we are. Oh, no. Yeah, no. That's where the idea came from is that the it was that conversation is like, hey, for Halloween, we should all pick a day where we play like pick a Saturday where we play like a long game. Like we stay at whatever location we're going to yeah. play D&D for a one shot and stay there for like all day. But dressed up like we would if we were that class. Oh, like as the actual character that we're playing. Yes, with. like the character, like have the one shot be we're playing ourselves, but we're in D and D world and we're playing the class that we all joked around on who would be. Like for example, I would dress up like a warlock because the character I'd be playing is a warlock. I don't want to play a bard. <laughs> I don't. I play one already. I feel like if we're going to do anything, we should do like a guess who run. And then we dress up as our guess who characters. Oh, guess who's going to be dressing up as a drow. <laughs> I'll be dressing up as a woman. <laughs> Granted. Yeah, it's, I don't think I can dress up as freed. I'm not muscular enough or tall enough or furry enough. Or... I don't think I can get enough I hair. Have... I'm not tall enough to be towel. I don't have the where, body that towel. Where, has. where am I gonna get enough hair? You a, a big enough, a big enough, a big enough wig for that shit? Because that bitch has got a lot of hair. Pelsar's got a lot of fucking hair. The fuck? So, so you get a wig, <laughs> oh and then you buy extensions, and you put the fucking extensions in the wig. I have friends who are freaking cosplayers, dude. They can help you out. It's gonna be like two hundred dollars just for the wig. <laughs> I would literally have to buy a full body. Out. Yeah, you know, guys, I would have to buy a like a. Oh my god, suit. you'd be a furry. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's where I was Always going. I was like, furries. man, I'm gonna have to. Contact no, well, wait some a minute. Furries. You're saying freed, but freed is not part of. That's why. That's that's why I'm saying that we don't just do the guest who crew. We do this idea so we can include other people outside of the guest who crew. Oh, like yeah. Jacob and like. Um, our other players well, in the was, other games that we play. I used to be part of the Guess Who crew as Pathrax. Yeah. So, but he, but I would have to, I would still have to get a fur suit because he's no, a he's a dragonborn. He was a dragonborn. That's not a fur suit, though. That's, no, but it's a furry. No, it's not. You can literally just paint the scales on. You don't have to freaking buy a whole ass bodysuit for that. Dragon head. Nonetheless, though, I don't think it should be guess who the guess who crew. I think it should be like a one shot thing that we do, and we just dress up like ourselves as a D and D character. As a D and D character, if we were thrown into the world, what would we be? There was a Reddit um, post that I saw where they they made like the grid in their backyard, and <gasps> they played in real life D and D. Bitch, don't f fuck me up. That'd be so fun, dude. I have a goal to do that for one of my birthdays. I want to do an IRL D and D, like a larping and everything. No, no, no. It's not larping per se, because larping like you're acting out like the battle in real time. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, like we're putting the grid on there. We're still taking our turns. We're still rolling for shit. It's and a mix of the two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just all like, and I'm just like, oh, I want, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want so bad. I want to do that so bad. Givey, 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 givey. But no, I really do want to do a D and D one shot where every or all the players are you're playing yourself, but you're the D and D character. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, but we wouldn't be able to do that this year. We would have to. So the places that I work, you can rent them out. Uh -huh. So and and like it's like a it's like a ballroom, like a big ball basically mm -hmm. and i was like dude like we could just rent out one of those spaces put the grid on the thing put the tables away the dm could be on the fucking stage and then <laughs> yeah like play the game that would be so cool but like the location that i'm at like it's always rented out like they're like yeah because we can we look at september 
And I'm like, bro, it's not up until next year. Like, it's not available till next year. We would have to do it on, like, I would have to try and figure out a day where they will have the place closed. And then we could rent it out on one of the days that the place is, like, where, like, what my job does. Yeah. Um, Because, like, I work for the city, you know, and the building that we work in is a county building. Mm -hmm. And there's a contract between the city and the and the county where the city can run the program that I'm a part of out of the county building. Um, And there are days where this where it's closed, like the the program is closed for the day, like they do like a movie thing or they do like a park thing or whatever. And so like the center is closed. So there's going to be nobody there other than the county employees like the foreman will be there you know yeah so i would have to try and figure out like oh what days are closed and then we can rent it out that but no i think we should do that it wouldn't be on halloween but like the week before or weekend before or whatever i think it'd be fun i think so too because i already got an outfit in my mom would do and i would save up money to get it and i would go full out because i'm like do i want to be because i would be either a warlock of great old one or a celestial warlock or like a deep sea one i would be have a bard a, you would be a bard yes i would have I'd to be get a sorcerer. Bird sword. <laughs> yeah. god damn i don't want to play a bard you could do like a like a <laughs> a minimalistic bard with a kazoo or something or a harmonica i'll just be a singer i'll sing my instrument is I mean, my I- voice well, I mean, like, I don't think I'm a bad singer. <laughs> I don't think I'm a bad singer. But it's either that I just, or I go I fi- and go and find a French horn and then, like, yeah. reteach myself how to play that shit. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Find, <coughs> I just need to find a place to, like, find, like, some stuff to, like, wear for, like, what, what like, where can I get, like, uh, like, it's going to be, like, definitely, like, a do-it-yourself kind of sorcerer outfit. Like, yeah. Maybe like go thrift shopping. I don't know. Go go through my mom's closet. She has a bunch of shawls. Like like wear one of her shawls or something. <laughs> oh no, I thought the same thing. I was gonna either get a shawl. I was gonna. Well, there's a certain look that I ha- that I found. I'm like, oh my god, a, wi- a, ty- a kind of a a witchy warlock. Yes, work. But I would need either a poncho or like a shawl of some kind because I'm gonna d- also do stuff on the inside of it and the underlay of it. I would like do shit with it depending. Like for example, if I go with a celestial warlock. On the inside of the shawl or poncho, whichever one I get, I would put like, I would like get a bunch of like jewels or some shit and then like make stars and shit the, underneath the, it. The fact but, that I, I already have eccentric shit in my closet. I don't. I do. Like, Same. I have very, no. like, I know that whenever you see me, like, I'm usually just wearing like t shirts and like skinny jeans or whatever because, yeah. like, like uh it's casual and i'm like oh we're only playing D D. i'm not you know out to like yeah. impress anybody but i have like bright ass orange pants <laughs> you know <laughs> like i have bright ass orange pants i have like like you've seen the types of like skirts i wear or like the dresses that i wear when i do wear stuff like yeah. they are they're they're loud i even like whenever i wear like my the quote-unquote hawaiian shirts they're very loud and eccentric. Like I wear a lot of brightly colored things. Hold on. Hmm. But now I would make a full on like I would need a vel a new hat. I would get as like a oh god, it's my hat of velvet, but I can't think of the type of hat it is. I have the image in my head. But I would have like I would just add some stuff to it, dangling things. I would get face I would get fake piercings for this. Like the asymmetrical piercing, I would get fake piercings, and then like a nose piercing, a fake piercing, because I'm too pussy you know, to actually do all that. <laughs> I just I just went on Amazon and looked up D and D sorcerer cosplay, and it pulled up a bunch of different like D and D themed outfits and like stuff you could buy, and I'm like. <gasps> Oh, see Ooh, now I'm gonna Google bitch. stuff. I'm gonna Google stuff just so that I can like get an idea of the costumes that I could wear. There's like so I could just buy a clown costume. Not gonna lie, 
<laughs> I mean, you could. I could buy a clown costume, basically. <laughs> and just, like, you know, age it or whatever. Hold on. But no, on. yeah, I would straight up need, like, a, I would need, like, a cardigan. Cardigan, shawl, fucking poncho, something along those lines. So I would want to go flowy. I have it. I have a very long burnt orange cardigan. But mm. I know that you want to change it, and I don't want you to fuck yeah. up my cardigan because it's like yeah, exactly, exactly. Because depending on what depending on what it is and what it looks like when I do find something, I might do the underlay of it. Otherwise, I might keep it the way it is and just add the other stuff depending on which warlock I go with. And just use like jewelry and shit instead of actually altering the thing. But no. what if like Not- we do D and D like do it with like a twist? Like um dress as your class, but with a modern taste to it. With modern no, player that, like yeah. Like- that's that's kinda yeah. what I was thinking without that's actually say right. without actually saying it. Yeah. <laughs> But me being extra, like, I would want to still wear, like, something that's, like, heavily fantasy-based. You're so yeah. colorful. Bard costumes. It's cute. But yeah, no. I would need, like, a cardigan. Ooh. I found, oh, like, I found a, a nice one with a hood. <gasps> Bitch. Ooh. Are you looking at that Kufandi long-hooded cardigan? Yes! Exactly. I, just, I found that one, too. I would wear it, too. But I'm trying to decide if I want the blue one or the black one. God, I wish my glasses were wore round because I would definitely rock round glasses on this look, on this warlock the, look. And the fact that the I the that the um costume that I'm looking at is a Final Fantasy bard cosplay, but it's a hundred percent something I would wear as a bard. That is so cute. Ooh, um, you know what I should buy? Like, since if we're gonna do it, if I'm gonna do a modern flair to it, why not? Like, I love hoodies. Why not be like? Like get like a like a really cool hoodie. Yeah. They have hoodies that look like they're fantasy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what? let me look that up. I'm gonna look that up. Mm. Well, hey, hold up. We're still record. I just re- oh. I just realized we're, we're still, still recording. recording. We're still Hi, recording, ladies y'all. and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi. We're <laughs> like we're actually done with this episode. So so uh, catch us next time as we continue on this m- magical story. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse us, we have a rabbit hole to descend, to tumble down. So, bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>